You wake up not knowing who you are or what you are on a desolate land where it seems like nothing can survive. You suddenly fall into the depths before you black out. And when you regain your senses, you notice that you've been plunged into an abandoned factory that's almost entirely alien to you. And that's the first impression you'll get of Scorn. You must be thinking that you'd be wandering this wondrous and dark, foreboding place filled to the brim with horrors beyond your comprehension. Instead, you are wandering confused and lost the whole time and shoot ants and chickens. I had a lot of expectations of Scorn. Despite what people say, I always looked at it with intrigue and curiosity. And just look at some of this. It's beautiful and dreadful landscapes. And it's inspired by the works of H.R. Geiger and... I'm sorry if I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, Zdyslaw Binkin... Binzinski. <laughs> Zid... Zdyslaw Binkinski. And then you actually play the game and... Uh, where am I? What am I doing here? And why does it feel like I accomplished nothing the entire time? How can a game that seems to have so much character only be surface level? Well, sit back and relax and let me tell you why Scorn deserves its name. And that's just some of the problems I have with this game. Before I start, this game has so much gore and nudity that I need to censor it so I don't hurt YouTube's feelings. Uh, I'm going to spoil everything because I'm also very, very angry at this game. Uh, so if you want to play this game for yourself, well, be my guest. Uh, that's your pain and suffering and not mine. On to the video. Okay, so let's handle this in the way that the game does and kind of go by section by section. Uh, since this game is essentially separated by like a few major puzzles. In the first area, after a bit of a sliding puzzle, you get to meet up with your first friend, Shelly. Shelly is a bit of an anxious thing, so we got to put him in this uh, trolley and help him come out of a shell. First things first is to stop by uh, this thing, and oh, I'm not sure what that really did, but who cares? It's probably fine. So let's bring this over to uh, this machine. Why not? Okay, let's save him. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> Well, at least he can still give me a hand. Just gotta shove it in there. And uh, here to unlock the door, and here we go! Easy peasy. Thanks, Shelly... Zarm. On to the next puzzle. Well, not so bad so far. And, uh, wow, that's a lot of dead bodies. Not a very sanitary place, is it? Uh, looks like we got some, uh... Uh, things over here and uh, some kind of bulb we need to put into this tower wait wait, wait. hold up hold up i just want to say right now the visuals are really damn good in this game and it's really the strongest point the way this world feels like there's an absolute disregard for all life but operates in an oddly organic way like this area specifically just has a bunch of dead bodies lying around and uh, I guess you could tell that they're also, like, not human. Or at least the kind of human we can recognize. It is also the most inefficient place I have ever seen. How could something seem so advanced, yet seem so unoptimized is beyond me? Well, if this was a business, it would have, uh... I mean, I, I guess it did fail. I bet it was government controlled. Anyways, back on track here, and uh, we got ourselves some kind of column and a way to insert bulbs into it. And uh, what am I supposed to do next? And then I spend a good 10 minutes wandering in circles, and while this game does an okay job pointing you in the right direction, maybe I'm just losing my intuition. Uh, prob probably no fault of the game. Uh, maybe. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the score. No, we're wrong. So I eventually found the first weapon, and you get yourself a jackhammer. Wait, weapon? Yep, there's combat in this game, uh, but we can get to it when it happens. So anyways, you use this jackhammer to stick this thing into that hole and uh, release the light spray bugs. If you came here for good descriptions, you're in the wrong place. 
Uh, and then you get the two bulbs into the tree column thing, and it bursts open and swallows you up. I guess. Now, how you get to where you are next offers no explanation. Uh, you also lose your jackhammer. Fine. I mean, I didn't know where I was beforehand, so... Meh. You pop out of a bubble in the wall and fall to the surface of this world. Now, to give the game some credit here, this does offer some things in terms of setting. You have what it seems to be a desolate world, no plants, but there is something alive here. We just aren't sure what it is. These structures, on the other hand, are pretty darn cool looking. Once again, props to the artists of this game. They really did nail the aesthetics. Just look at some of this. It's gorgeous. Anyways, time to walk back into the darkness and, uh, oh, whoa. What was that? I sense a new friend. Let's call this one Peach On. So, the next major puzzle here is, uh, flower? You need to collect some balls in the key to make the flower push its bulbs out at you? <sighs> okay, then. No innuendos at all. So this was just a lot more exploring and figuring out where all the key pieces are, which is also a little minigame. And, oh, oh no, Peach On! Don't do it! No! Oh, did I mention the P stands for Parasite? So, Peach On is a curious case. He puts his arms in your guts, but also provides you his tail, which has the jackhammer in it. Sure. The sooner you accept that not a whole lot's going to make sense in this game, uh, the better off you'll be. I'm serious here. It was at this point while wandering these halls that I felt something. Uh, something that you really shouldn't be feeling from this game. The feeling of drag. And to the point where you feel like you've been here for too long, and you know it's time to move on, but you just can't. And it's not like the puzzle here was all that difficult. Well, I did get lost, but that's not the point here. The longer you feel that drag, the less satisfying completing the puzzle will be. I really believe there is a fine line in puzzles where you drift between feeling good about completing a puzzle to thank God it's finished out of frustration. And I definitely felt that here. And that's bad because I'm only like two hours in this game. So anyways, you found all the balls and put them in the key and look, there were bodies in the tree the whole time. And it's, uh, getting up. Maybe we'll get some kind of story. Just kidding, it died. Well, at least we got a key. At this point, we also get the trifophobia bug, and, uh, that's how you get health. You just gotta juice yourself every once in a while, and it's fine. One thing to mention is, uh, Peachon holds these items for you. Once again, sure, why not? Peachon rewards you with a hug to the guts. It, it just wants to be close to you. Who can blame it? Remember when I talked about combat? Yeah, I'm just going to talk about almost all of it here because who doesn't want to hear me complain for the next five minutes? So, any horror in this game went out the window with this combat. There, I said it. In this game, you get access to a couple of weapons and your jackhammer. And because it's supposed to be a survival horror, you get limited ammo and health. And it really feels like this got, like, shoot in. Almost like they forgot to do it until like a month before releasing it. And this is so damn tedious. And the monsters are damn goofy. You got chickens and these ant looking dudes. And this thing that kind of like a bull or a horse. And that's pretty much it. They all move slow and they all take too many hits. On top of that, and I'm not sure on this, but I swear they have invincibility frames. So that you find yourself needing not only to play, pace your hits, but you have to straight up run away. For your jackhammer to recharge and then run back and hit it more and then run away again and the biggest issue i have it slows the game down to a crawl you know that drag i felt earlier this amplifies it nothing about combat felt good there was no real fear and frankly it did the opposite it took all the horror out of this game and it draws you out of the atmosphere and you know they did this to pad the game out now i'm not a horror connoisseur but even I know what horror is to a degree and it's not this and of course you know they had to group these things up together causing even more running back and forth I really did not like any moment of combat in this game and I know a lot of games have this but I feel like I got whiplash here 
You have a dark, foreboding world that's utterly engrossing and mysterious. And then you got a fucking chicken around the corner that wants to spit green snot at you. <sighs> fucking hell. Also, screw the horses. You get a stronger gun later on to deal with them. But in the meantime, they take like 8 bullets while your maximum capacity is like 12 or something. Oh yeah, you store the bullets in your hole bug. That was pretty funny. Uh, there's also some kind of like tentacle thing. You fight like twice. I, I forgot to mention that. Whatever. Back to the puzzle. Uh, this one's all about roll cages and moving them to the right spot. And uh, I'll be honest, I forgot about this entirely until I started reviewing my footage. I do remember swearing at the ants in the part of the puzzle that has, like, levels to it. But yeah, nothing too crazy here. Atmosphere is still top-notch, despite the enemies. After this puzzle, we notice that Peachon is starting to infect us with something. Uh-oh. At this point in the game, this is where the enemies really start to wear on me. They are sending more at me, and my health is low. This made combat feel even worse than it already was. But here is also where I probably got the one moment where I genuinely felt a foreboding fear. When you look up and see this thing staring right back at you. This giant slug straight from I have no mouth and I must scream. This, this right here, this is what I was looking for. The feeling that you are insignificant in the world around you. The dread that you could do nothing but witness your own demise at the hands of something you can't even imagine. And, uh, feeling is gone. That was quick. Time to rip through its flesh sacks with levers. I also want to mention that this thing never once tries to attack us. It just stares at us. Anywho, it apparently makes its home on an elevator. Well, uh, that's unfortunate. And it's dead now. Maybe? Well, now I definitely feel bad for that thing. Time to go to the next area. Peachon once again reminds us that we're going to be very dead soon. Thanks, Peachon. Onward to the last area. I'm going to call this place Sex Temple for uh, obvious reasons. Easily one of the most striking places in the game, though. The crumbling palace full of various art fully contrasts what felt like almost like a void of art in the previous areas. I am also pretty sure that they hired the horniest guy in the room to design most of this. Anyways, as you approach the temple, you find this neural network from the brains of previous people that have been here. Maybe they were a part of this temple at one point? But yeah, that's clearly Cthulhu on the wall. Moving on. Uh, you see these two pregnant-looking things? Uh, they require sustenance. But where can you find such a thing? Well, mashing dead test two babies, of course. What'd you think it was gonna be like potatoes or something? Test two babies. Oh. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Why do they have a baby masher in the first place? And why do we need to put them into mechs and fight them instead of just like smashing the glass on these test two babies? Whatever, fine. So the first baby you insert into this mech looking thing and uh, nothing really happens. But the second baby starts working as a uh, mech-looking, like, crane from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this is probably the worst boss fight I have ever done. Not even because it was hard, but because of its delayed combat system. With the boss having iframes as well as this was grueling. Eventually he falls and you try to take his grenade launcher. Uh, just kidding! Fight him again! I must have spent 20 minutes running around this cage of limbs, fighting this mech, feeling my sanity slowly slipping away. After a few tries and some swearing, I did manage to beat him, and uh, as you attach your prize, the grenade launcher, uh, surprise Peachon's tentacles? Yeah, it pretty much fuses to your hand, uh, and uh, you're stuck with that grenade launcher now. The third baby was uh, a much easier fight. You just wait for him to reload and open his, like, backpack so you can pop a grenade in it. And done! Third baby mashed, and it's time to feed the other pregnant thing. Right? Wrong. Peachon wraps up your other hand. Uh, even though you have your thumb free, you still apparently can't deposit this blood canister. 
So I guess you need to separate from uh, Pichon somehow. So I'm not even going to like bother explaining this last part of the puzzle. So I'll just like break it down a whole bunch. Uh, you put your arm in the armor ripper thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know why this specific machine exists either. And uh, blow up random things with your grenade launcher to get the level access you need to enter what I assume is the medical room. And success! You remove Peachon from your body and, uh, seems like he forgot to put your guts back. Whoops! Well, at least we can finally use this damn baby juice tube. <laughs> this gives us access to the sculpture that was in the middle of the room. Uh, that we hang ourselves on. And the machine proceeds to suction cup our dong, cut off the top of our skull to toss a piece of our brain to the neural network in the sky, and he also, like, continues to stab your guts out. You then separate your consciousness into the two pregnant things, and uh, one of them detaches the knife arm from the robot and attaches it to itself. And then picks up your former body, which you continue to stab, because reasons. Sure. But at this point, I'm like, this is pretty cool. You gave us a whole new game mechanic to play around with. And too bad it lasts about three minutes, because once you pass through the doors of this arguably coolest looking wall in the whole game, the game just ends. And you might be wondering, oh, so we do finally get any idea what's going on? What is beyond these clouds and statues? No. The thing carrying you deactivates, and Pichon comes back for a second round to finish the job. And now you are formed as one with Pichon at the entrance of your probable salvation. I think this infuriated me the most. Out of all the shitty combat, all of the mundane puzzles, all of the pain and suffering our character had to push through, to literally walking up to the steps of this place, with his guts hanging out of him, and barely any life left in his eyes. And this is what you get. An unsatisfying conclusion to an unsatisfying game. And it hurts. Visually, this game is amazing, and if you remove the combat, about half the puzzles, the game design, you know what? Fuck it, just make it a first-person movie. I'd be happier with this. You can tell this game had something going for it. It has amazing potential to be one of those centerpieces that people would be talking about until the end of time when they mention atmospheric horror. But instead you get this clunky, unrefined mess that has no conclusion. Oh, only with the legacy of, uh, oh, it's that game. And hell, it's not like there's any story to cling on to either. I assumed it's supposed to leave you up to interpretation, but it feels completely directionless. Your character has no motivation to do any of this, so why is he? There's no reasoning why these great factories are operated with the efficiency of your local DMV. There's no reason to so much of this that it starts to blend, and in the end, you just don't care. Any shred of care you had about by the end of the game was executed alongside your character that gets swallowed up by the parasite. And so to finally answer why I think Scorn is a good title for this game, because that's exactly what I felt for this game by the end. Scorn. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was a very different kind of game to tackle, so I'm glad I did it. And if uh, you liked it, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go experience actual horror and uh, go get my driver's license renewed.